Hey guys, what's going on? Wow, my camera about fell off there. I got some real high-tech uh, uh, camera support device here. I have one of these uh, battery-operated lanterns sitting here on my scanner with a screwdriver sitting there with the camera propped up on it. So that you could be going any moment. Uh, first off, I wanted to really thank you guys for the support. I've, got good uh, response on this channel and I really appreciate that I you know I tossed this around about doing this uh, for quite a while and as I said originally I thought it would be a good idea finally to just split this into two different things and so I know I said originally you know we're gonna do much car stuff or any well this was just gonna be talking and that's really what it's gonna be there may be things about cars like just talking about something about a car but no like repairs or mechanic things and stuff like that and so if you're wondering about that that's the idea here and uh so i really appreciate it um and i hope you find something interesting here I, like I, said, I had a i had a feeling that there'd be you know there are folks that just want to watch mechanical type stuff and there's folks who just want to uh well, let me rephrase that. There's people that want to watch mechanical how-to things and they don't want to watch opinion type stuff. And then there's people that like probably both of it, you know, but you like to kind of, uh, you know, just hear some BS and I guess you could say. So I'm trying to keep these sort of mixed mixed up a little bit as far as just not, I don't want, want to get on here and just da 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 every day about something, you know, that's on my mind that's kind of a rant. I know we call those rants, but uh, I don't really like to use that word. I just kind of, I'm just kind of just saying what's on my mind per day because I've gotten, you know, I've, I've been in people's videos and I just, they just kind of on and on and they're angry and, you know, it's just not really that fun to sit through. And I so I don't want that. So I want to just, you know, keep it a little bit lighthearted. I think the biggest thing I got going on was maybe that was about the dog. <laughs> But that kind of, that was annoying. I, that lady was silly, that dog hanging out her window, wasn't she? So here's what was on my mind recently about something to talk about. <laughs> um, Y'all have noticed as, as time has went on that we've gotten into a more, I guess you'd say, more modern society, obviously. But I can remember, I was born in 1971, uh, and so I can remember that you know, back then life was a lot more simple from the time, I guess you could say, that I got able to be aware of the world in the 70s. And as time has went on, we've gotten more modern, uh, more technical, more involved. Uh, you know, there's just a lot more information, a lot more things to do, a lot more things to, to see and be a part of. And one thing I've noticed is that as we have progressed through the years that we've come up with these words that um, for whatever reason they, they don't really mean anything. To, at least I don't think they do. You know, they're words that are designed, I think, more or less to make something that's not so great seem better than it is. And sometimes they're probably... Uh, I'm looking at my list here, by the way, cheat sheet. Uh, you know, they're maybe designed to make somebody feel better or feel better about themselves, you know. And, but I think a lot of it is a lot of like making a bad situation a little bit better. And I have nothing against that. But to me, it sort of insults my intelligence what I have of it a little bit to hear stuff like this because I know what it means. I know what these words mean. I know what they're trying to do by using these words so I thought I would just go through a little short list of words here and I may think of others while I'm talking about this uh, and I'm sure y'all have heard this I'm going to say what the word is and I'm going to tell you what it really means and in most cases it doesn't mean anything else so uh, first word I've heard a lot is I've heard the word legacy a lot legacy if you remember or you've heard what legacy means that's to define the word legacy it means that it's sort of a uh, historic 
type of uh, situation around something, I guess you could kind of say. Um, but what the people have been using the word legacy for is for something that's not even what it's really meant to be used for. And like in our own situation here in this state, the great state of Alabama, the broke, they're using the word legacy to describe a computer system, which they've used to pay bills in this state, which is antique and antiquated is the word. It means it's old. So instead of, you know, to make it sound better, to put a new spin on it, and there's another word, spin, that means to fake you out about something, basically. If it's, when you spin something, when you spin something like politics, it means that you're trying to make something that's shitty sound better. So, but anyway, legacy, they're using legacy about this computer program. We have an old, outdated no telling how old this thing is, should have been updated a long time ago, system that they're trying to use, and they're calling it a legacy system because legacy is a lot nicer word than old, old, worn out, outdated, decrepit. That's what that word actually means in that context. That, so if you hear somebody say, well, this is a legacy system, or this is a legacy uh, design, or this, this is a legacy this, well, you need to correct them and say what you're trying to say is it's old, buddy. It's not legacy, it's old. Old, old, old. Now here's another one, and I know I'm walking a tightrope between having some people start hating me about the dog thing. Now, let me say again, I don't dislike dogs as a rule. I like dogs, I've had dogs, but I like smart dogs. I like dogs that are, you know, they are more of a companion and they're capable of looking out after themselves a little bit more than these shithead dogs that the neighbors got over there that just make noise and they don't do anything else any good or hang out car windows like in the mommy's mommy's window but here's the one I've seen and this is you know I know some people are probably gonna get on to me but a senior dog you've seen that on the news a lot they start talking about senior dogs a senior dog needs a home needs to be adopted it's a lovely senior dog well what that actually means is as harsh as it may be to hear it but what senior dog means is it means it's an old dog it's an elderly dog that could die at any time because that's just the way life is we get old we die so this dog has been surrendered because he had some bastard of an owner who was too good to have an old dog and didn't want to look after it. And not only was he surrendered from those idiots, but he is having a hard time being adopted out again because, you know, Mr. and Miss Potential Pet Owner, they want something young and beautiful and in good shape. They don't want some old dog that's worn out, you know, it's got gray hair on its nose. They don't want that because... There again, this day and age, people don't want anything that drags them down. They want all good news. So that's what a senior dog is. It's not senior, it's old. Old! So, and there again, this ties right into that. Forever home. You ever read in news articles or something about the pound's got an animal for adoption to say, well, it needs a forever home. That means. Let me define that phrase for you. That means that they're trying to find somebody who's stable enough that the first thing that the dog does wrong, they're not going to have a flip out shit fit and come bring the thing back. I didn't know the dog did that. You know, people do that. People do that. They adopt an animal and they have these, you know, these rose colored glasses. They think the animal's going to fit right in. He's going to get along with all the other animals or he's not going to bark, or he's not going to meow, or he's not going to scratch furniture, he's not going to piss in the floor, whatever. But to find that, that the animal will do that, and then they bring it back. So that's what that means when they say they want a forever home. That means, in other words, it means is, no matter what this animal does, you keep it. Uh, here's one that I have seen all the time these days. You never used to hear this word ever. In fact, you never used to hear any of these words. This is all these feel-good words to make some mommy feel better, I guess, but by herself. Uh, <laughs> all right, this one, experience, the word experience. Um, 
this has been used all over the place. It's talking about now, it's talking about we want you to have, like if you would say, we want you to have a better experience. But they're using it, they're overusing it. It's like, you know, you go on to a grocery store website or something and they'll say, scroll down for your experience. Or uh, visit this park for a wonderful uh, new experience. Everybody, anyway, everything's experience. It's, it's all about having an experience now. It's not about just doing it. It's about having an experience. I gotta have an experience. Oh wow, honey, it's a it's a wonderful experience. It's my online shopping experience. That sounds stupid. It really does. It's only these people that are so caught up and fascinated about their status, I guess, that they gotta make sure they have experiences. <laughs> All right, here's another one, and I know it sounds like I'm throwing off on the pet owners. I'm really not, but I see this again. You know, I, re I read online news. And I see a lot of this on online news, and that's where it starts making me upset. But pet parents. Now, I don't care if somebody wants to call themselves a pet parent, but my whole thing about this, why I keep going on and on about this, is because as a human being, whatever excuse of a human being I am, I do not appreciate an animal who throughout history, since there's ever been dogs, walked around on four legs, that they've been below humans, okay? I don't appreciate when, I don't know if it's the media or pet owners or who it is has tried to get this going forward to, to build this thing up, this trend trend but it's like the level of a human being and an animal a dog is like going like this it's like you know where does it where's the balance going to be is like are you going to have the human up here or is the dog going to be up here the humans down here where where does that work out at how does that work you know is it equal is an animal equal to a human because I'm going to just tell you something you know like I said, I, I like dogs, but, you know, I don't want to be called a pet parent because if I do the physical things necessary to pro procreate and I have an offspring, which I know how to do all that, if I do that, it's not going to be with a fucking dog, okay? I'm not going to have a dog son or a dog daughter. It's not possible. It would never even happen. So I don't want to be called a pet parent, you know? Because you're blurring the line there between reality and fact. Or fiction, I mean, I should say. I, I think my line is being blurred there, probably. So I don't want to hear any more about this pet parent bullshit. Uh, you know, if you want to, if, if your life's not any better than you have to be called that. What's that number say on there? Uh, if, if you just have to be called that, then whatever. But I'm not a pet parent. I'm not ever going to be a pet parent. I don't ever gonna have a canine son or a canine daughter or a cat son or a cat daughter. That's stupid. It really is. It's stupid. It's one of the most stupid things I've ever heard. I, if I have a pet, it's an, I'm a pet owner. Okay, I'm the master. It's down here below me. It is my companion, but it, its life, is controlled and dictated by me. It's not the other way around. You know, I've, I've talked about this before about them over there, that they jump every time the dog barks. And that, again, that annoys the shit out of me because, you know, that's all due to bad training. That's people that have decided that they don't want to be in control of the pet. They want the pet in control of them. That's how that works. They need to be led by the dog. Everything they do in their life needs to be dictated by and controlled by and shaped by the fucking dog. That will never happen in this house, I guarantee you that. Okay, two more, and then I'm going to cut this off. These are phrases uh, more than just a word, but here's one that I see all the time because I get these things in the mail. I hope nobody's dumb enough to fall for this. If they get you these, give you these, these credit card offers or they give you these uh, car loan things, and it says you're pre-qualified. Do you know what pre-qualified means? It don't mean shit. It doesn't mean anything. Pre-qualified is not pre-approved. 
Those are two different words, okay? So when you get one of those, don't open it up and look at it and tell your husband, hey, honey, we're pretty qualified for this. We need to go down there and get it. It doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean anything. All that is is a fishing thing. Fishing. P-H-I-S-H-I-N-G. It means you're, you're basically you're fishing. You're trying to get people lured in to buy something. It doesn't mean anything. They don't know who you are. You, they don't know you from Adam's house, cat. They're just sending all, they get people's addresses out here and their name, and they just mail this shit out to them. They don't know who they are. They don't know you. They might have your name on it, but the people can buy these name lists all over the place. It's nothing. It means nothing. Nothing. So don't think that you're special because you got a pre-qualified offer in the mail. You don't mean a damn thing, guys. All right, here's the next one you'll see in the newspaper a lot. They'll send you these things out again, usually for a car. It says, all applications accepted. Now that one really annoys me to no end. All applications accepted. Why don't you send me a letter that says, hey, you know what? You're approved to open the door and walk in because that's the same thing. It means nothing. All applications accepted. That means, you know what that means? That means you can fill out a credit application, you walk over and give it to the person, and that's it. They'll accept it. It may go in the garbage right after you leave, but they'll accept it. It doesn't mean anything. That does not mean you're approved for that loan, okay? Don't fall for that shit. It's the same as sending these stupid keys in the mail. You know, it's it's not upset about, I'm not upset about me about things like that. I'm just upset about other people that fall for stuff like that. They don't know any better. So when you hear this pre-qualified, all applications accepted, take that thing and throw it right in the garbage because that's where it belongs or wipe your ass with it. I don't care what you do with it, but get rid of it or let the dog pee on it because that's what it's worth. Don't ever fall for stuff like that. Don't go walking in there with that piece of paper and say, uh, it says you're accepting these applications. I'm going to turn the application in. Can I get a car? I want a car right now. It says I'm accepted for a car. You got the word wrong, genius. Because I don't go there because I know people that sell cars and I don't want to go into that. But uh, that's uh, uh, the car thing is... You know, if you knew the half of what it takes to buy a car and how it goes about when you sell cars, which I've done that a little bit, you'd be, you know right away what your status in the world is. Let's put it that way. So anyway, guys, I want to uh, <clears throat> just run through those with you real quick. I hope that was kind of a little entertaining. Oh, well, you know, I get, periodically, I get some of these stuck-up nitwits from other parts of the country, and they get on to me because I have an accent. I don't have an accent. I can't help it. I was born here, so I have it. And I thought I would make light of that a little bit. I'd give you a couple southern words uh, that you hear down here. You know, southern people are so bad about, and I've got about a minute and 20 seconds left to say this, but southern people are so bad about um, getting on when they uh, people that are from other parts like Mexican or something like that and they can't understand them they bitch and complain about they can't understand what they say well I'm telling you something people down here massacre the English language nearly as bad you almost can't understand them so here's you a southern word for the day this word is asked not ass asked A-S-T that's, that's in place of asked A-S-K-E-D you don't say, did you, are you, have they been asked, or are you going to ask them? You say, are you going to ask them? Are you going to ask them? Are you going to ask them how much that is? Are you going to ask them if we've been approved? There you go. And the second one is, instead of saying palm off cigarettes, we all say pale male cigarettes. It's not spelled that way, but that's the way we say it, because we know better. See, you guys, got to turn this off. Later.